Hi everyone and welcome back to another lab. In this lab, I will configure and verify AAA authentication on Cisco devices using the RADIUS protocol. As usual, I will start our demo with an introduction to the AAA framework and why it is important, followed by an overview of the lab topology and objectives. And then I will go over the lab tasks and then finally I will walk you through the lab solution. By the end of this lab, you will understand how to implement AAA authentication, integrate it with an external radio server, and secure device access. So first things first, AAA stands for Authentication, Authorization, and Accounting, and it is a security framework used in networking to control user access, enforce policies, and track activities. It ensures that only authorized users can access network resources, and it defines what they are allowed to do and logs their activities for auditing and security purposes. AAA is essential for network security, especially in large scale environments like enterprise networks, data centers, and service provider infrastructure. So the first component authentication is the process of verifying the identity of users or devices before granting access to the network. This typically involves credentials such as usernames and passwords, but it can also include multi-factor authentication, certificates, or biometric verification. Authentication is crucial to prevent unauthorized users from gaining access to critical network infrastructure. Common authentication protocols include RADIUS and TACAX Plus, which are widely used for centralized authentication in enterprise environments. Once a user is authenticated, the next step is authorization, which determines what actions or resources resources the user is allowed to access. For example, a network administrator might have full access to configure routers and switches, while a regular user may only have permission to connect to the internet. Authorization policies are enforced using access control lists and rule-based access control. This ensures that users only perform actions within their granted privileges. The final component, accounting, is responsible for logging user activities, including logging attempts, commands executed, and the duration of sessions. These logs provide an audit trail for security monitoring, compliance, and troubleshooting. Accounting data can be stored in centralized servers and analyzed for suspicious behavior in order to help organization detect potential security breaches or policy violations. So AAA is a fundamental security mechanism in modern networking that forces only authorized individuals access network resources while keeping a record of their activities. It helps organizations comply with security regulations, manage user permissions efficiently, and maintain accountability. So with with regards to the lab topology, we have a router, which is router 1, that is connected to switch 1. And switch 1 is then connected to a couple of devices. So on the left-hand side, we have the management PC. And on the right-hand side, we have the main radio server. And all of these devices resides in 10.10.10.0/24 network. And the aim of our lab is to grant access to users from the management PC to end devices via the radius server. So regarding the lab tasks, we will start by testing connectivity between the management PC and router one and switch one, as well as the radius server. Make sure that connectivity is already in place. And then we're gonna go to step number two, where I'm going to enable SSH version two on router one and switch one. Next, we're gonna jump into step number three, where I'm going to configure AAA services on the radius server itself. And then after that, I'm gonna then jump into router one and router two to configure AAA framework. And and set some configuration to define the radius server and whatnot. And then finally, we're gonna go to step number five, where we are going to initiate SSH sessions from the management PC to router one and switch one. And also we will perform some post checks and that will be the end of our lab. So before we proceed to the lab solution, if you would like to test your knowledge on this topic, you will find a post linked in the description below. The post includes lab information and a couple of packet tracer labs which are provided in a Microsoft document. You can download the document to access both the pre and the post lab versions. Okay, so I'm gonna tackle the first task where I'm going to jump into the management PC and I'm gonna initiate some ping to make sure that there is connectivity between the management PC and switch one as well as router one and the main radius server. 
So I'm going to go to management PC and then I'm going to go to the CLI. And from there, I'm going to initiate a ping with 10.10.10.10. That's the radius server. And we do have accessibility and connectivity to the radius server. So I'm going to up arrow this and I'm going to try to ping the default gateway, which is router one. So I'm going to hit enter and we do have access as well. Now I'm going to ping switch one. Okay, so switch one is not reachable. So I'm going to jump into switch one and double check what is going on. First of all, I'm going to go to the CLI and from there I should be able to issue show IP interface brief. And I can see that interface VLAN one is admin down. So I'm going to enable this interface. So I'm going to say interface VLAN one, no shutdown. And then I'm going to save the configurations. I'm going to go back to the management PC and I'm going to reinitiate the same command. And we do have reachability and connectivity to switch one. Next, I'm going to tackle step number two, where we need to enable SSH version two on router one and switch one. So I'm going to start with switch one since we are on it anyway. So I'm going to go to global config. And from here, I'm going to say IP domain dash name. And here I'm going to say I everything everywhere dot com. Next, I would need to generate the RSA key. So I'm going to say crypto key generate RSA and I'm going to hit enter and I'm going to say yes. And here I'm going to say 2024. Next, I'm going to enable SSH version two. So I'm going to say IP SSH version two. And then what I'm going to do next, I'm going to jump into the VTY lines between zero and four, and I'm going to force SSH protocol. So I'm going to say line VTY zero all the way to four. And here I'm going to say transport input SSH. And that will be it for this step on switch one. So I'm going to do some in-flight checks. So I'm going to say show IP SSH. And you can see that the current version that is being enabled on the switch is version two. And if I say show running dash config pipe section VTY, you can see that we are enforcing SSH only for the first five VTY lines. Okay, so with that being done on switch one, I'm gonna repeat the same thing on router one. So now I'm going to perform some in-flight checks. I'm going to say show IP SSH and you can see the current SSH version is 2. And again, you can see that we are forcing only SSH protocol for end users to use when they are trying to connect to router 1 and switch 1. Okay, so with that being done, step number two has been complete. Now we can move into step number three, where we need to jump into the radius server and perform some AAA configurations to enable the AAA services. So I'm going to go back to my topology and I'm going to go to the main radius server. I'm going to click on it. And then I'm going to expand this. I'm going to select services or click on the services option. And in here on the left hand side, you can go all the way down to triple A option. And from here, you should be able to enable the service by selecting the on radio button. And then after that, we would need then to configure the client name, the client IP and the secret password as well. And also you would need to select the service type. And in my case, I'm going to be using radius protocol. So be free to use this one or use the TACX option as well. So under the client name, I'm going to say R1. Under the client IP address, I'm going to say 10.10.10.1. And then under the secret attribute, I'm going to use the radius underscore pass. And then I'm going to hit add and you can see a new record has been added. And then I'll do the same thing for switch one. So I'm going to say switch one. The client IP is 10.10.10.2. And the, the secret is radius 
underscore pass and then I'm gonna hit the add button now that once we've done this we would then need to add the username under the user setup so here I'm gonna say admin 123 and the password is going to be admin 123 and then I'm gonna hit the add button and you can see the user has been added. So with that being done, step three is complete. Now we can go ahead and jump into router one and switch one to configure triple A framework. So I'm gonna start with router one and I'm gonna go to global config once more. And from here, I'm gonna enable the triple A framework by saying AAA space new dash model and i'm gonna hit enter so this command enables the authentication authorization and accounting feature on the cisco device and it is required to configure any triple a related authentications so what we're going to do next we are going to define a radius server name so i'm going to say radius server and i'm going to call it main dash radius dash server and from here, we are going to specify the IP address of the radius server. So I'm going to say address IPv4 10.10.10.10. And now we should be able to set the port number as well. So the default value is 1645, but I'm just going to hard code it anyway. So I'm going to say 1645. Next, we would need to configure a shared secret key between the device and the radius server for secure authentication. So I'm going to say key and here we're going to use the secret radius underscore pass and then I'm going to hit enter. And at this point, we can then hit exit to get out of the triple A configuration mode. OK, so with that being done, we're going to set up the triple A authentication for logging access such as console, SSH or Telnet via the radius server. And also we would need to set the privilege exit mode as well. And in order for you to do that, what we would need to do, we would need to say AAA or triple A authentication. And then we're going to say logging default group and then we're going to specify the radius option. And then after that, we would need to say triple A authentication, enable default group, and also we're going to use the radius option. So at this point, router one is good to go. So I'm going to hit end and I'm going to issue the show running dash config pipe include triple A. But if I issue the following command, we can look at the full configuration that is related to triple A. So you can see these three commands that has been inserted into our configurations. And if I keep going, you will be able to see the actual configurations also related to the radius server. OK, so with that being done, I'm going to jump into switch one and repeat the same steps. So I will go back to switch one. And then from there, I'm going to go to global config and I'm going to start by enabling the triple A framework by saying AAA new dash model. And then I'll just follow the same configurations. So I'm going to fast forward the following. And now let's perform some in-flight checks. So I'm going to say show run. You can see the AAA basic configurations are up here. And with that being done, I'm going to jump into the management PC and try to initiate a, an SSH connection to switch one and router one and see if we are able to log into those thin devices using the radio services. So I'm going to go back to the management PC. And from here, I can say ssh-l admin123. And then I will include the IP address for router1. And I'm going to say admin123. 
you can see that we have managed to log into router one and we are on the user access mode. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to issue the enable command to go to user privilege mode. And again, I'm going to say admin one, two, three, and the password is going to be the same all lowercase. And now you can see that I am actually on router one in user privilege mode. So if I issue show users, you can see here that I have uh, logged into router one via the VTY zero and the user is admin one, two, three. And also I can say show triple A session. You can see that the current username is admin one, two, three. I'm coming from the this IP address, which is the IP address of the management PC. And I'm going to exit this session. And then I will try to SSH to switch one. So I'm going to up arrow this and I'm going to change the last octet to two. And again, we've been prompted with a password. So I'm going to say admin one, two, three. And you can see that we've managed to log in successfully to switch one. I'm going to issue the enable command. And now we have managed to log into switch one successfully with no issues. So again, I'm going to issue show users. Again, you can see that I've logged in using the admin one, two, three account. And if I say show IP, sorry, triple A sessions, you will see similar information as well. So with that being done, you can go ahead and save your configurations across your network devices. That's it folks for this video. If you found this video helpful, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button and turn notifications so you never miss our future tutorials and tech insights. If you have any questions, comments, feel free to drop a comment below. I read all your comments and I'm here to assist you. Remember, consistency and hands-on practice are key to success. So stay curious, stay inspired, and until next time, peace.